now that these things are free, that means that I am now cured and can leave the planet. Because if anybody remembers from ages ago, the reason you can't leave is because the laser shoots down any ships that either come into the planet or leave the planet. And the only way to deactivate the laser is for a being that isn't infected to press the button. So I am now in a position where I can turn that laser off and I can basically leave. However, you can't leave a planet without a vehicle, a mode of transportation. And that vehicle is the Neptune rocket, which I haven't built. So next thing to do is build the Neptune rocket. I have no idea how complicated this rocket's going to be. I already have the materials ready to build the platform. The, the, the launch platform that you got ages ago. I've already gathered the materials to build that. So I'm going to make that and see how... Cause I, what I imagine it's going to be like is that, say, for example, when you build a scanner room, it's got its own, um, like, uh, crafting station in it. So I think that when you build this one, it'll have its own crafting thing and it'll allow you to build the rocket. But I don't know how many materials the rocket's going to have. So let's make the journey back. Let's see if it's dead. Is this thing just going to be dead now? There we are. Oh, it isn't dead. It's just not having the best time. Maybe it doesn't actually die. Maybe it's just asleep. But the, the assumption is that it's not going to survive. Unless it's worse every time you come, which is just depressing. I still can't scan it. You'd think you'd be allowed to scan it. I want to sit on its head. <laughs> it doesn't let you go too close to it. I want to sit on its head. I'm, it's so sensitive for me, isn't it? This creature, this ancient creature is dying. And I'm like, I want to sit on its head. Can I stand on it? I never tried stabbing it. I wonder what happens if you stab it. Yay! I can play on the creature. I'm a horrible person. So there's probably going to be a lot of running back and forth for me between wherever I build this launch platform and this base down here. Because this base has most of my supplies. And obviously I am also probably going to go have, have to go out and get some more supplies. Because if the rocket is the big thing you have to build to escape the planet, I imagine it's going to take a lot to build. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like five plasteel ingots and, you know, tons of enameled glass and all of the stuff that's awkward and complicated to do. Welcome aboard, Captain. I don't know why I came back here when I don't need to be here. But I may as well top up on food and stuff while I'm here. See, look how easy it is to fill... I hope lantern trees are in Subnautica Below Zero. I hope they are. Or at least something that's like that. I guess if I didn't have the lantern trees, the Chinese potatoes do the same thing. It's a renewable resource. Because you take one of these and it just grows again. And it gives you 12 food. Now, these are arguably better. I just like the trees. and the cooler. So we need to head to Aurora South. Because that's where my Seamoth is to take me to my other base. And I know that at my other base, there's a platform where I can construct the the Neptune platform. What I think I might do is I might try and build the Neptune platform above the Aurora South hub base thing that I made out here. Because then all I need to do is swim down and swim up. So I think the depth of this is only about two, 300 meters. So it'll be easy enough to cover in a Seymour. I also have a prawn here now, so I'll be able to use this to gather resources if needs be. This, however, is the worst one of these. The fact that there's like a really rickety, awkward bridge. This is the one where I said if you fall off, you have to walk all the way around here. So yeah, you can't like grapple in here because it just doesn't work very well. I'm too heavy. And look, another one, another rickety bridge. It doesn't, it doesn't help that the, the way the prawn moves, it sort of waddles as it walks. One thing I also did when I was uh, making all these bases and stuff is that I replaced all of my batteries in the Cyclops and in these two vehicles, this Seamoth and that prawn, with the ion batteries because they just hold so much power and you just don't need to worry about it anymore. 
it's a good progression system in a game where you get to a point where you just don't have to worry about stuff like that. So I think that's a very good thing. Here it is, my other base. Nice little complex sat on a rock. It's very simple. It's a simplistic design, but I like it. And then we'll plug this in here. Welcome aboard, Captain. Thanks, Habitat. Question is, can I build a Markiplier on a chair? Yes, I can. You are now in charge of this base. There you are, Mark. Hold the fort. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, look at him. <laughs> look at him doing his job. Uh, oh, yeah, I've also got some more pictures up in this place as well. These pictures always look shit unless you look at them for a while, and then they're like, oh, yeah, we got to look all right. I took a picture of the Aurora poster as well, so I could have it up here, even though there's only one poster. Which I think is a cool idea. So you have your screenshot saved. I have a perfect screenshot of the Aurora poster, so I can use that. Unfortunately, the other posters are, are portraits. That's not as easy to do that with. So the materials, I think, are in here. Here we go. I don't need that. So these are all the materials to build the Neptune launch platform. And then somewhere up here is the vehicle crafting thing. I can never find it. Somewhere above... I bet it's directly above me, isn't it? No. Where are you? If I probably go on the surface, it might be easier to spot. Not that way. Not that way. There it is. I am going to pack this up and take it just a little bit further over there. Pack you up. So I want to place this above there because then I've got the easiest route to get back to my materials and also back to all of my um, other bases through the portals where I can just gather supplies easily. I don't think there's any leviathans around here. I've never encountered one on this route. I mean, famous last words, obviously, but let's build it here. I hope that was a shark and not a leviathan. It was a very scary noise. Probably you, wasn't it? I see you. I see you eyeing up my, my boat. Yeah, let's just go a bit higher. Maybe it'll, uh, maybe it'll leave me alone. And then we can deploy the mobile vehicle bay. I don't know, like... Aesthetically, I kind of wanted to build this in a place where you could see a nice view of the um, Aurora in the background. <laughs> but I, I like tactically, it makes more sense to have it here. So I'm, I guess I'll put it on the the outskirts of the area. It does make sense. Also, somebody told me in my YouTube chat, uh, YouTube comments, which I didn't even realize. A commenter said, "Why do you think?" The, there's some clouds that aren't moving and that the horizon is messed up now that you've found the land. And I was like, oh, that makes perfect sense. Look, you can see there, the clouds obscuring the land. It's so that you can't see the land immediately. You have to wait until you approach it to find it. But in theory, if you notice that there were clouds that weren't moving, like this shimmer that's in front of me now, if you notice that, you could have found the land straight away, which I think is kind of interesting. I mean, there could be an island out there that I've not found. I don't know. Right. Let's do this. Oh, that is big. I mean, I guess it is going to have a rocket on it, isn't it? I'm surprised I've not made one of these earlier. I've had it for a long time. I guess I didn't want to leave. I was enjoying the planet so much. Oh, and I get a sunset for the build as well. That's nice. Okay, now it's taking its time. Guess I'll have a drink. Okay, you're taking the piss now. Finish. Thanks. Well, that was loud. Okay, let's take a look. This is fucking huge. Obviously, it's going to have a rocket on it, but still. I feel like I should have needed more materials to build this. This is enormous. Uh, and I was right, there is a little station on it. Okay, let's see how much the rocket is going to cost. Neptune Gantry. Is that to get... Do I have to build it in parts? Oh, it's going to take a while. Because I... Can I not look ahead? 
How do I see what the other parts are? Well, I guess we're going to be doing a lot of trips, aren't we? All right, plasteel ingot, copper wire lubricant. I've got enough to make this already, so I can do that straight away. Not on me, obviously, in my base. It's a good job I built this here, then, isn't it? Can you deconstruct this the same way you can deconstruct other stuff? I would imagine that you can. Doesn't seem like you can. Is it a permanent fixture? Could you build this and build a base on top of it and have like it as a floating island? I guess it's a vehicle, isn't it? You can't deconstruct vehicles. You can probably blow it up. You can probably do enough damage to it where it just wouldn't exist anymore. Right. Let's head down here. See, it's, it's barely any distance away. This is a great plan. Alright. I'm hoping if I park this somewhere like under here there's less chance of it getting eaten so i'm not going to be long okay aboard, Captain. that was a weird roar are you knocking about oh there you are hello buddy i need to name you what can i call you oh you just crash it a wall that's embarrassing everyone's just watched you do that what can i call you spyro spyro the sea dragon probably like an obvious name but something i noticed as well which i find a little bit annoying uh so galleries these little things i'm in now this little uh, view in observatory thing the glass is perfectly clear i can stand against it and it almost looks like i'm not even inside but normal windows are like tinted and it makes looking out of them difficult and it's unnecessary i don't like it Oh, I might have had the book now, because these have been full for a while. Um, what am I here for? Materials. Okay, so I've got plenty of lubricant. I should have plenty of copper. Uh, one plasteel ingot, which is 10 titanium. And, oh, I've, I've got them. All right, I'll have it. Okay. That should now be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark it just so I know for definite. Okay, that, that's it. Neptune Gantry, let's go. Where? Oh, I'm going to have to put a beacon down for this thing, aren't I? Good job I've got some on me. Like, it's massive. There it is. I can already see it. Oh, it's it's on the map. That, that, it pops up. That's fine. I do need to change the colour of it, though. It needs to be... That colour. Gee, you fucking... Stupid shark. Wish there was a place to dock your vehicle in this. Yeah, I, I don't like the fact that I've just got the ass of the ship facing me here. Like, it would have been nice to have had a different side of it. But it's fine. I do kind of like... Oh, the, that island's directly in front of me as well, there. That's uh, that's the um, Tagassi Habitat Island. Right. Dramatic! Let's get a good angle on this. It's riveting stuff, isn't it? Does each one have a new computer that you have to use to build stuff? Oh, call the elevator. To 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 what? <laughs> Activate the elevator. Can I go up now? I can. Let's go and see what's up here. Nothing. Wow! Look at my rocket. <sighs> I just jump off here. Yay! 360! That could have ended very badly. Right, let's see what's next. The Neptune boosters. Plasteel nickel. I think I can already make that as well. Wiring kit's two silver. Aerogel is gel sacks and. Gel sacks and. Another material. <laughs> Plasteel, we've obviously got a nickel, I think I've got some of. Uh, right. Okay, so let's get rid of that one. Pin this one. Okay, so we need three nickel. Where is my nickel? Nickel's in here. Oh, perfect. Three nickel. One plasteel, which we already have a spare. Two aerogel. I don't know if I've got any of this already constructed. Um, I'll do the wiring kit now because I know wiring kit's two silver. You can tell how many of these things I've had to make. It's by the fact that I just know what they're made of. 
All right, so that's that. And then the aerogel. I know it's gel sacs, which would be flora, plenty of those. Maybe it's the mushrooms. It might be deep shroom. Let me take a look. Rubies. Oh, easy. I've got loads of rubies. It's so... It's. I'm so glad that I did resource gathering. Like It makes this so much easier to do. And then I can make a second one, and I've already got it. This is going very well. Nothing has gone wrong so far. Nothing will ever go wrong. Ever. Things are going to go great. I wonder whether the baby leviathans just start to venture out and you'll just find them around the map, or whether they stay in that area and they're just there to be like, look, we're free, yay. Ah, <sighs> okay. So we've got the gantry. Time for the next part. Oh, it's big. Ah. Oh. Oh, no! I want to watch! Look at this. It's a cool rocket design as well, with the, uh, the four legs. Although, I will say, this... I, I, I assume these detach when it launches, because these are just holding it on, right? Because if these are legs and they're going to go up with it... Nah, I think they are just holding it in place. That would be an extremely like, bad waste of the weight capacity that you can have on these thrusters. Alright, Neptune Fuel Reserve is next. Plasteel again. Two ion power cells. Four kyanite and crystalline sulfur. I might not have enough crystalline sulfur. But obviously I know where to get it. Kyanite, I think... Oh, obviously it's right outside. Um, ion power cells, I could just take them out of the prawn. I, I could make them. They'd they take a bit of materials, but in terms of just trying to get through the uh, the construction of the rocket, I could. I could. See, I, yeah, I could steal them out of that. I, I'll do it on the way back if, if I need to. If it turns out I've got materials, just, just crash into everything, it's fine. If it turns out I've got materials, I'd rather not. Because I feel like just stealing them out of my machines. I mean, I am trying to get home. I guess it doesn't matter. If I'm going to leave the planet, it doesn't matter if I'm going to take resources from my other builds. I, I assumed I'd have to do some kind of exploring to gather supplies at some point. So I'd be amazed if I have enough. I do have a lot of stuff, though. They're not taking as much as I would have expected them to. Each one's taken a plasteel ingot. And I think I've got enough titanium and lithium to make two more of those. Unless the final part's going to take... I reckon the final part might have glass. Because, like, you, you want to be able to see out the window. Right, now I need these. Ten of those and two lithium. I believe that's how I make a plasteel ingot. Make titanium first. And then it's that and the lithium. Perfect. Okay, so that's part one down. Alright, kyanite. Have I got that? Oh, kyanite's in its own. I don't know why I've got a, a box for kyanite when it's something I don't need a lot of. But yeah, four kyanite there. Okay, this is going to be the one I might not have. Four crystal... Oh, I do! Look, I'm so I'm so resourceful. Resourceful. Noun. Somebody full of resources. So I could take these two power cells and swap them out. Let's just have a quick look and see how easy they would be to make. Just so I don't have to do that. So yeah, silicon rubber I've got plenty of. I could easily do that. I would need four ion batteries. And to make an ion battery, I'd need... Four cube. I can probably easily do that. How many iron cubes have I got? One. My pro I need to bring my prawn back and go drilling. So all, all I need is three iron cubes. Now I've got the uh, the replenish thing up there. So the only thing I'm worried about is that I'm going to use these resources instead of just taking what I've already got. And then the next one's going to be like, you need all of this stuff and I won't have any of it because I've just used all of it. So that I don't have to make any more journeys... I'm going to take the two out of the prawn, and I've got the materials to put them back in, just in case I need the gold and silver for the next part of the build. Because I want to, I, I want to prioritize that first. I can always make more batteries in between this and what will be, by the looks of it, the final stream. So if anyone's wondering why this isn't the final stream, because once I've built the rocket, I can leave. I 
want to finish this game in a, a point where I am comfortable to put it down and say I have done everything I wanted to do. And for me, a big part of that is to go through and read all of the lore because I find it all I find it quite interesting. They've put a lot of time into making this planet feel alive. And I want to go through and I want to read all of that. I know it's going to be weird reading it after I've finished the game, basically, because there's going to be some things that I could have learned ages ago. And I've had people in the YouTube comments having to go at me for not reading stuff, which is, on the one hand, funny, but also, on the other hand, true. <laughs> I should have been reading them as I was going along, because it will actually... People don't mind me stopping to read, and I'm going to remember that for Below Zero, and I'm going to read things as I find them. People, I, I, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm doing, I'm playing through a game. No one's going to sit there and listen to me talk. That's the reason people are watching me play the game. <laughs> Otherwise, they just play the game or just watch a playthrough without a co the commentary. That the, I'm here to provide that. That's what, yeah. So, uh, yeah, in future, I'm in Subnautica Below Zero. I'm going to do that when I do play that eventually. But what I want to do is, I, there's a few things I want to do. I want to read through every single thing. I want to learn everything I can about the game, just out of my own personal curiosity. Uh, I also want to kill one Ghost Reaper Leviathan. There's a specific one that is my Moby, uh, my um, White Whale, not my Moby Dick. But uh, was the was the whale called Moby Dick? I thought it was called the White Whale. I don't know. I've not read it. But that's my White Whale. I am gonna kill it. That, even though I don't need to, I want to do that. I'm gonna kill it, and. Once uh, once I've done that as well, I also want to go online and see if there's like a map of uh, the game that I can look at and see if there's anywhere I've not been. Because there are alien bases all over the place. That, there's some that don't really serve a purpose. Like the one where um, it was in the Lost River. There was one where going in didn't really give me anything, it just gave me law And a cuddlefish egg, I think. Which I then lost when my uh, resources disappeared or despawned. Yeah, so there might be more alien bases around the map that I've not found. If there's not, then it'll be fairly easy. So the plan is, after this, I'm going to do one more stream, one more big stream, and then I'm going to upload that whole thing to YouTube as like a big long thing where I go through that. And then I'm going to put a timestamp in that for people who just want to watch the launch of the Neptune at the end and, and the, the end credits of the game. So the next episode is probably going to be... <laughs> the next episode is probably going to be very long, but the uh, it's going to conclude the game, essentially. Can I not... Oh, I, I'm pressing the wrong thing. Alright. Perfect. So I now have enough to make the next section. Here we go. I like how it's already smoking when half of it's missing. I'm on the wrong side. Okay, Neptune Fuel Reserves. I love how dramatic the music is whenever you do it. And also the fact that it just cuts off immediately. So we've got thrusters, we're getting fuel in now. So the next one will be the habitable area. What do they call it? The nose. The, the place where the, uh, the astronauts are in the ship. I'm trying to remember the term. I mean, it might just be cockpit. I like how it says Neptune on it. I want to rename it. I've got a base called Neptune. There. There it is. I don't want it to be called Neptune. That's my name. I know the game already had the name in it. Right. What do we need now? Here's the cockpit. Okay. What do we think? How difficult do we think the cockpit's going to be to make? Right. Here's my guess. Okay. One plastic lingot. Uh, I'm going to say two enameled glass. Um, a an advanced wiring kit, and because I'm trying to think what would what would be needed. The glass is obviously to see through. The plasteeling is because all of them have had a plaf, have all of them have had plasteel. The uh, advanced wiring kit because obviously there's going to be controls in this. Diamond maybe for like protection. I was right with enameled glass. Cyclops shield generator. Computer chip. So I got the wrong chip part, but it is an electrical component. A, a, a Cyclops shield generator. So you need the Cyclops. You need the Cyclops to make this. Because if you don't have a Cyclops, then 
I might have a spare one of those, actually. I think I might have taken it out. Because I replaced it with a thermal one. That might be the one I took off. Because I didn't need it. Because I was deploying decoys. That would be really funny if I don't even have to make that. Alright, so I can, I can definitely make most of that already. I tell you, right, of all the things in this game that you have to collect, the most difficult one I've found so, uh, in the, pretty much the entire game has been Stalker Teeth. Stalker Teeth you need any time you make enameled glass. So you make glass, and then you make um, enameled glass using the tooth and the glass you've made. Stalker Teeth, the only way to get them um, is to... Uh, Oh, there's a few ways. I think you can punch them in the face or damage them and they drop them. But the the most efficient way is to um it's to drop metal near them and then have them pick up the metal so they drop teeth. And so I've had some sessions where I've gathered like four or five bits of metal and I've specifically left that metal um in like a nesting ground for one of the stalkers and just sat there for half an hour, as they've picked them up and dropped them and picked them up and dropped them and picked them up and dropped them and gathered as many teeth as possible, just so I don't need to go and get teeth again. Because the stalker teeth are so... It's like, it's just a really weirdly awkward thing. You'd think you'd be able to, like, in the late game, if you punch one in the face with a prawn, you'd think it would just drop one every time. Before we go and get the rest of the stuff, I'm going to go and head to my cyclops... Which, if we remember, is floating around the big laser. And I'm going to see if that Cyclops shield generator is the thing I took out. Because it would be quite funny if it was. If not, how easy is it to make? I can't imagine it being that difficult. Uh, advanced wiring kit. Polyaniline power cell. I've, I think I've got all of that already. Are you dead yet? Or are you still just chilling? Yeah, I think it's just asleep. It's just going to stay there sleeping. Yeah. End of its lifespan. I hope it doesn't, like, you just come back one time and it's dead. It's a bit sad. The fact that they've, like, let it just lie there sleeping. You like to think that it's going to be, like, peacefully... I mean, the thing's a thousand years old. Maybe it takes a while to die. Are they still around or have they gone for a wander? Is that one of them? No, that's a warper. What are you doing here? Wait, I'm I'm free of the infection now, right? So, from what I gathered, those things are like I think they're artificial and they were built to deal with infected specimens. And so because I'm no longer infected, they're not going to attack me. So warpers are no longer a threat. Which is kind of cool. What's this? Oh, a time capsule. Oh, I should have scanned it. Oh, I keep forgetting to scan things. I found a few of these. I've not read any of them. I'll do it in the big reading session. Right, anyway, let's head into the Cyclops. Welcome aboard, Captain. All systems online. Okay, I've not been in you for a while. How are things going, Cyclops? Um, right, if I'm right, I think it's in here. There it is. Look at that. Don't even have to make it. How do I make the computer chip? That's one thing that... I've got a Markiplier in there as well. Just Markiplier's everywhere. Uh, how do I make the computer chip? It's two table coral. I think I collected loads of that. Because table coral's another one that they're only in specific places. Also, something else I found. I didn't mention this. Um, there's more portals. I thought all of the portals I'd found. Because this one connects to the one in the um, the Sea Emperor thing. And then there's four that connect to other places. And I'd not found any others. But when I was on the island up there, there's one inside the island. And that connects to somewhere else. I don't remember where it goes. But it goes somewhere. So there's there's other portals everywhere. I mean, I feel like they're a little less convenient when they're not all together. The reason why this hub has been so useful for me is because there's four portals next to each other that lead to different corners of the map. And then, obviously, that makes it super easy to get around. 
Also, I don't know whether I've mentioned it in this half of the edit, because obviously the previous episode and this episode are separate. But if anybody's noticed, my um, O2, my food, and my water is bugged out. So there appears to be a bug in the game, which I'm surprised isn't more, like, well-known amongst everyone, because it's literally happened to me every time I've played. If you go through the portals enough times, um, I don't know if you have to be in the prawn or whether it works on foot, but if you go through the portals enough times, it just breaks the survival mechanic, and you have unlimited air, unlimited food, unlimited water. Uh, the only way to reset this, is from what I've discovered, is to re-log the game. Um, however, it doesn't, also, it doesn't give you unlimited health, though, so you can still die. Um, however, it, I mean, it has been convenient because as I've been moving around constantly, it just... When you get to a point in a survival game where you have enough food and water, especially in this, where I've got unlimited food because I've got trees that replenish food, and I've got unlimited water because I've got a machine that generates water, and it generates it at a faster rate than I use it. So... I'm not like I'm not thinking to myself I need to relog because it's unfair, because by this point the survival mechanics are an afterthought. I basically easily resolve them anytime they're a problem, so it it's fine. Like it's a weird bug, and obviously some people might be like, "Well, you're not playing the game properly if your health and that's not going down properly. You should relog." Look, we'll mark a by period of the window. <laughs> you should. Uh... You should reset the game and make it work properly, but I it's it's fine. I I've died to I don't think I've died to hunger or thirst, but I've definitely died to war two. That was my first death. So yeah. I've I've had the the pain of it. I'm guessing the cockpit's the last part. I mean, there's a chance I might need to make the fuel. Because I've made the fuel storage thing. And it, I mean, did it, it had a power cell, didn't it? It needed two power cells, so that must be the power, like the fuel it's using, right? Because those power cells are, unless that's the electrical power and I need thrust. So I might need to make something explosive. I don't know. I'll find out when I build it. But I, I think the cockpit might be the last part, because you put the top on it. The only other thing I can think is that I have to fill it with fuel, or I might have to fill it with resources. Like, some kind of food, maybe? But the, the, I don't know what you would do. Bottles of water, maybe? I, if I was making the game, I'd make the rocket, like, really hard to do. I'd make it so that you need a lot of supplies and you need a lot of materials to build it because I think that the rocket, specifically, is it's the last thing you're going to do. So it's meant to bring together everything you've done so far in the game. And by this point, you've got like, portals that are active everywhere. You can go anywhere on the map. You've got loads of resources and things that you've done. I, I think it would be nice if it was like tons of stuff. And that's why you make it in parts, because otherwise you can't carry it all. There's loads and loads of stuff, and they should have had you build it bit by bit, like, and had uh, just like stock it with stuff for the journey. And that's it. That's everything I need now for the for the cockpit, as you can see. In the corner, pinned, done. Right, I'm going to head back and while I'm here, I am going to pick up two power cells just so I can use the prawn. I've never had a machine, I think, run out of power. I've always managed to get it back and charge it. So having the ion batteries, I I've had equipment run out of power. So, oh, I also discovered another bug. I just reminded me. When you replace a normal battery with an ion battery and a piece of equipment, it duplicates the piece of equipment. So, for example, if I take the scanner and I swap out this ion battery, originally it was a, a normal battery. When I swapped out the normal battery for this ion battery, it created two copies of my piece of equipment. One that had the normal battery and one that had the ion battery. And it was really weird. I, it's such an odd bug. I also replaced all of the batteries on my Cyclops with Ion Ones as well. Even though I'm... So personally, I'm not the biggest fan of the Cyclops. I understand its purpose, and I think that were I to have got it maybe a bit earlier, it would have been a lot more useful. But for me, the Cyclops, it's a bit cumbersome to get around. Um, also, I mean, my opinion of it has been sullied by what happened to all of my items. But... I think the Cyclops is, like, I think it's the awkwardness to move it. 
it, it works really well as a remote base. I think that's the best purpose for it, is to have a remote base and to work out of it. And that's obviously what the intended purpose was, because that's why it's able to carry a, um, a vehicle around with it. But for me, the Cyclops, it's the kind of thing where I feel like the best use of it is to drive it to a place, leave it, and then just use it as a hub. And I think if you had enough to make multiple Cyclopses, it would be a nice alternative to having to make bases everywhere. However, you need scanner rooms to really make the best of bases. And so that's why I've built all of my little outposts with scanner rooms. <sighs> okay. Hopefully this is the last part. But, I mean, considering so far, this has been piss easy to make. And I know that you can say that I've already done the legwork for it because I've got so many supplies stored up. But if this is it, I will say, personally, this should be harder to make. Mainly because it's massive. Why is one plasteel ingot going into making this? It should be like... So I think what I would do... It, say like the cockpit here, I would want five plasteel ingots because by this point you've got a prawn and titanium is not that hard to find. In, in some places there's not a lot of it, but in the lava caves there's veins everywhere. Anytime you find a wreck there's tons of scrap, each one's got four titanium. You can scan anything that you've uh, already scanned and you get two titanium, loads of it. And also in theory you could deconstruct something and get it back. Uh, the Cyclops shield generator is fine, like one of them's okay. Enameled glass, I would have said two, maybe even three. And I would have had more computer chips as well. I'd have made this a lot harder to make. Anyway, let's stop complaining. Let's do it. This would be a lot more interesting if I could, like, go up and see, but the lift is too slow. So, I just you'll have to just listen to the sound effects. It's like crackling. What was that? Don't give me a dramatic build-up tense piece of music just to announce that I've built a rocket. No. I thought the laser was just going to shoot it because it had been built and I wasn't allowed to do it yet. Fuck you, game. I guess it's done. Oh, I can rename it. What would I want to call it? Obviously, I don't want it to be called Neptune because I've got a Neptune. Let me think. What's um, what's on theme? Okay, so my current theme, every base, every big base here is named after a planet in our solar system. You know what I'm going to call it? I, I've got a name. You are going to be called Pluto. Fuck you, scientists. Demoting Pluto. No. My rocket, biggest thing on the planet, it's awesome, it's going to be called Pluto. If anybody hasn't heard it, uh, Tom Cardi has written a song. Um, I don't know what it's called, but it's about Pluto. Go listen to it. It's it's very relevant. What do we think? Is it a bit too simplistic? See, I I don't I I, I didn't want to make it white because it starts white. Maybe I can make it like a grey. It's a bit more interesting. Yeah, that's what you get. That's what you get for demoting that planet, Pluto. Dwarf planet, giant rocket. I mean, the, the the planet's probably bigger than the rocket, but it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I, I'll i finish. Like, my name and convention. So, uh, vehicles are named after Earth vehicles that have gone into space. So, we've got Curiosity, Ranger, uh, Endeavor, I think that one says. It's quite hard to read from here. Uh, we've got Artemis, and then obviously... Apollo, so uh, Apollo 4, that's my fourth Seymour. I've blown up three of them so far. Uh, okay, I'm going to get a little bit of distance, and I'm going to have a look at my rocket. I want to see my rocket in all of its glory. Where's my Seymour? So I can get some air time and have a proper look. Ah, ah, so cool. Rocket. Also, I'm doing this because I can use this for the thumbnail. Rocket. Alright. 
I am now at a point in this game where I think, as far as I'm aware, I'm basically done. So, we have a fully built rocket, which we can use to leave the planet. And we have cured ourselves, and by the, the way that we've released those things as well, we have cured this entire planet. We have made this place better, even though we've killed some stuff. We've made the place better. The only thing that is left to do is to disable the laser. Because I, I think... I don't know whether or not, if you took off, it would just blow you up. Or whether you would try and take off, and it would say, you can't leave, you will get blown up. Maybe it'll be like warning, if you try to leave, you'll get blown up, you can still do it and get blown up. Yeah, so we're currently at a point where, yeah, we can, we can leave, if we wanted to. <laughs> Maybe, I wonder if anyone's ever built more than one rocket. Because you could, you could build as many as you wanted. Just cover the ocean in rockets, somebody's done it. As I was saying earlier, there is one more thing in this game I want to do, and that is to go through all of the 96. It, it's Considering how much I've loved this game, it is a bit stupid and a bit sad and a bit annoying for people that I've not read these. So many things I could have been reading and learning about things, which is why I'm going to do a big session where I read them all. So that might not be the most entertaining thing to watch. So as I said, the next episode of this will be the last one. And that will be where I read through everything. I probably take a break in between to do other things, like go and explore some locations, because I'll do a bit of research in between and find out what I've not discovered. So I'll, there'll be a break in between reading where I can go and hunt the... I want to hunt the ghost leviathan. I also need to scan a normal leviathan. I've not done that yet. Uh, I've scanned the sea dragon. I've scanned the ghost leviathan. I've not scanned the normal reaper. Um... And then, once I've done that, yeah, I'm going to put a timestamp in, you can skip forward, and we will be taking the rocket launch out. Presumably credits roll. Uh, I imagine it's one of the games where you can load back in and re like continue to enjoy your world, because obviously we've done a lot. But what I tend to do at the end of these gameplay uh, videos, like these long play, whatever you want to call them, is I go through a big summary of the game. And as you've obviously heard through the playthrough, I've been... I don't know why I've not made myself big... As you've obviously heard through the playthrough, I've been very much enjoying this game, so it's going to be mostly positive feedback. There's a few things, obviously, that I'm not... Um, I think that could be improved slightly, but it's obviously not going to be anything major. Like It's a fantastic game. Even if you've watched me play through this, I would highly recommend it, because I've clocked in... Uh, th at this point, it's going to be up to 80 hours of this game, and most of it's just been me watching a film or watching some YouTube and going around, gathering supplies, building bases, exploring new locations, scanning things, uh, enjoying just being underwater and having that experience. So unless you've got, I think, is it Thalassophobia, the one that's like Fear of Open Water? I would say brilliant game, highly recommend. Um, I I'll talk more about this at the end of the next episode, but yeah, we we've reached this good point and... That's the end of the Subnautica part of my stream for now. So, if you're enjoying this series, let me know in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. And obviously feel free to pop over to the stream at some point and say hi. And uh, there's a lot, as I always say, so, many of this is cut, so much of this is cut out of where I talk to chat. We've been having a big conversation in chat earlier about uh, remakes and games and whether or not you should play the first game in a series before you play the later ones. Like, for example, I, I want to play the earlier Witcher games before playing Witcher 3. Uh, I, I That's been happening in the chat, so if you want to join in those conversations, then come join the stream. Otherwise, thank you for supporting on YouTube. Um, I, The ultimate goal on YouTube is to get the channel monetized. At the moment, I don't think it's going to happen with this one because I don't get enough people watching the videos. But every view and every bit of watch time is appreciated. And if you do... If, if, like, you do pass this on to people and it does end up getting to a point where it can be monetized, then obviously that would be very nice for me because then I could work more towards making content creation my full-time career, I guess, again. Because that was what I was doing until I needed to take a break from it. Because I'm, I'm telling you, like, working from home exclusively is not good for you. Now, I, I guess it, no, it's, it's not it's not good for me it wasn't good for me so now that i've managed to get out and about and i'm uh, i'm doing a lot better oh one of my habitats are out of power now that i'm getting out and about and i'm doing a lot better and i'm uh, getting a lot healthier 
I, I'm ready, I think, if, if I went back into doing consecration full-time, I think I would be in a position now where I would do it better. I know how to do it better. Anyway, I'm rambling. Thank you for watching. I hopefully see you in the next part where we'll do like a deep dive into the subnautical lore. Ooh.